Hi, I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101. Continuing with the road series, my son went to a internship that will last him most of the summer, doing studies with frogs up in the northern Sierra Nevadas. And I'm taking my daughter and my wife home right now. And we're gonna start our summer where she works and interns and we're kind of taking a break from life for a little while and going to spend a little time together and enjoy our time alone. I'm going to try to be productive in some new ways, not the same old ways. And not sure what that's going to look like, but we were talking today about, well, let's talk about what we talk about. Sometimes I wish there was a camera on the wall and whenever we're having a conversation, and we just get it. I say, I want to make a video of that. I'll stick that up there. And I can't because I don't want to be all about this. This is secondary to my family and to my thought processes in my life. And I make these whenever I have a chance, like right now, I'm waiting for them to come out of the mall. And I'll just try to reiterate a little bit of a talk that I had with my wife this morning over coffee and just do it for the video. And she said to me this morning, what do you think about this uh, condo collapse? And what do you think all the other people that live in con condos that are similar to that are thinking? And what do you think they're going to do and all that? I said, well, here's what I think. <laughs> it's this long, convoluted answer. But really, it needed to be said. Otherwise, you wouldn't get it. And I said, to the best of my recollection, uh, I, I said, well, here's the way I look at it. You can't prove that Jesus existed or... God exists or that he's the son of God you can't prove anything and what he was even trying to do with his message was to try to get you to believe in something you couldn't see it was the most out there thing beyond our realm that you could possibly come to and yet he used the idea of putting your beliefs building a foundation on a solid rock because the waves can come in and the storms can lash out and your house won't fall. It's funny that he used that because in order to be able to see, be among the few that could see what actually he was talking about, you already were putting your yourself on something that would seem to most as being volatile, building on sand, this building on something you can't even see. And yet he calls that the rock. But if you take it away from all those things and about faith and about his teachings and things like that, and you just look at it as a regular life thing, and he chose that example because you would think that if you were wise, you'd know to live like that, to build your house upon a rock. And yet, those that have means and wealth and privilege and power and money and serve that are the ones that find themselves living in the most desirable places. And some of the most desirable places let's face it, is along the coasts and on lakes and in temperate, good climate areas, but definitely the coasts. What do we know about coasts? If you're out in California, you've got earthquakes. The fault lines right along the coast, so you don't really have tsunamis building as much because the fault line would have to be out in the ocean in order to get a tsunami to build. And so the houses right there on the beach at Manhattan Beach and Redondo and stuff, they're probably okay unless the water levels go up a lot, then they'll be worthless, at least the ones right on the ocean. Earthquakes probably won't affect them if they're built well. But the ones in Florida, like the condo, of course they're built at best on sand <laughs> that moves around with the water underneath it. And at, at the best, they have to be built as a solid raft to go around and move on that sand. Kind of like our house. We live on a hill, and we know that our hill's moving a little bit each year, and our house is going with it. Well, if that condo is built in such a way that it was all one support structure, then it would have just moved when the foundation moved. Some of the foundation wouldn't have moved separately, and the rest left there and caused it to fall. fall. It would have just gone along and moved. But you get a whole bunch of circumstances that cause problems for whenever you build on sand. And that was one of the ones that first reared its ugly head. Now there's going to be a lot more building code enforcement and research 
that goes into looking at something that can shift that much. And, uh, you know, they're going to figure out what it is. It's going to take time. And you're going to ultimately find out, well, I know what it is. <laughs> we wanted to be there on the beach. And when you're on the beach, you build on the beach. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not on the beach. You have the money. You have the means. Everybody else is doing it. Looks like you're going to be fine until you're not fine. So I said, there's the wisdom in Jesus' teachings. He knew how hard it was going to be for the people of earth to fathom where he came from. And because it was so far out, he put an ironclad example, building a house on the rock, as one of his main teaching aids that he gave. It's ironic that those that lived in the earth, and even now, to put their faith in something they can't see and allow that to guide the things that they do actually see, it's ironic that it's so unusual. It's like finding the narrow road that enters through the narrow gate that only few will find. Because it's unusual to be guided by something conscious-wise, non-physical realm-wise. It's unusual. But there's a wisdom in it. Because here we have all that we have. I was saying to my wife, when Jesus was taken up the mountain, he was saying, here's all the kingdoms of the earth. I'll offer them to you if you'll just follow me. By the devil. I said, you know, it looks good because it's right there. But let's face it. We're getting older now. And we've lived a lot of different lives, a lot of different ways. And we say, what else is there in this world? How much quality foods and wines can you, can you, can you consume? How many different pleasures can you actually have? How complex is this world? If you've got a roof over your head, you got what you need and you're healthy, maybe a flat screen TV, maybe some video games, maybe play a musical instrument, what else is there? All there is is helping those that might ask that are in need, and few do ask. We live like kings over here in America. What else is there? Not much. So when Jesus was tempted, he said, look at all these great things. Yes, he did use the word to rebuff the devil, but he also probably thought, like me, so what? Yeah, it's a big kingdom, okay. And I'm going to live for that and the pleasures that I might bring and be the big leader. I think he probably had enough just to say, I don't need that. I don't need to live on the coast, building on sand. Even if I could afford it, wouldn't be wise. And Jesus constantly told the people that were with him, many people that are learned and powerful leaders would love to be able to see the things that I'm showing you, but they can't. Forever they're trying to see, but they can't see. Here you have it. The value is in on that. The knowledge of something that's larger, that you can't really grab. I'm constantly telling my kids, because as they get older, they constantly get on my back about my teachings. There is no such thing as Paul's teachings, I said. I've taught you according to Jesus' teachings my whole life. All I've ever shared with you is Jesus' teachings mostly from the highest commandment. If you're upset with me, you're not really upset with me. You just think you are. You're really saying there's no validity in Jesus' teachings. But Dad's right in front of them. It's easier for them to put me down and think it's me that's causing them to not have what they think they invariably want, that it's more desirous of them than what the most ironclad value I can give them is. So I'm making this video today to say, what do I think about that condo? I think when you build your house upon a more moving thing, you better have some redundancy in place so that if it does move, at least the solid substance can also move instead of coming crashing down. That's what I think. And I think that's what Jesus is teaching to tell us. In the physical world, compared to heaven, the kingdom of heaven, things operate the same, Jesus told us. We don't know that there even is a heaven. We don't even know that he is the son of God. We don't know these things. We have them on faith. Faith. But conscious understanding through conscious counseling that I try to talk about isn't Paul. It's just another way of relating how that faith actually takes and manifests itself in reality and really gives us a, a stronger foundation to stand on than we ever think. It's only when we try to humanize and belittle God, bring him down to our level, and we take the essence of what he has to offer us out and make it our own, 
we shoot ourselves in the foot and we fall and our rock isn't solid and it fails us. Those are the kind of things we talk about over coffee. <laughs> And trivial things about what our kids are doing too and what we're going to do for that day but almost all the time i'm i'm best in the morning uh i'm reinvigorated and, and alive and um these are the kind of things we talk about but the camera's not ever rolling and uh i don't care i don't i don't really mind because most people when i have something profound to say you know, they're not looking for that they're looking for titillation they're looking for something that already supports what they want to believe anyway most people aren't willing to go out on a tangent and find something new and rediscover most people are humanistic most people do reach a psychosocial crisis where they stop learning and they just find whatever they need to be comfortable <sighs> hey this is my first car video on the new car it's quieter <laughs> all right that is what it is anyway that's our video for today and as always glad you stopped by love to hear from you love to talk with you got some ideas coming up I'll share those in other videos i'm paul roberts this is Conscious Counseling 101.